Hello everyone, my name is Bradley Anman. I'm a member of the Elwood Hebrew Congregation, and Rabbi Shmuel asked me to share a few words about Shavuot this year and my spin on it. So the way that I thought about it was over these past weeks and months that we've been in isolation, we've been restricted, we've not been able to partake in the normal activities that add meaning to our life. We're not being able to gather socially, gather religiously, take on our passions, our hobbies, anything that we normally do. And whilst that's been quite hard for everyone, there's definitely a positive out of it. We've been able to reflect and become more appreciative for those things that we do have in our life. We've been able to gain a, a gratitude for, for those things that we usually do. And when restrictions start to ease now, I'm sure everyone's going to tackle their day-to-day -day lives with that extra bit of passion, be very happy about everything they do, and be a bit more appreciative of everything that we do have in our lives. And that's a really beautiful thing. It also ties very nicely over to the, the story of Shavuot, where the Jewish people were roaming in the desert for weeks and weeks and weeks with seemingly no end. Um, and that would have been a very tough time for them, a lot of hardship. But once they got to Mount Sinai and Moshe brought down the Ten Commandments and gave us the Torah, God outstretched his hand and took us in as his people I'm sure all of them would have felt very similar. That extra bit of appreciation, that gratefulness um, for having gone through the hardship and get that extra sweet touch at the end. So on that note, I want to wish everyone a Chag Sameach, have a good piece of cheesecake, and be healthy. That's all from me. Have a good Shavuot. Shavuot is my favourite Chag for a few reasons. The first reason is that I celebrated my bat mitzvah on Shavuot and um, I was also the first female to say a Dvar Torah downstairs in the men's section at Elwood Shul um, for my bat mitzvah and that was a huge milestone for me and something I will always remember. Um, the second reason that um, I love Shavuot so much is the central focus it has on staka and um, giving to charity or those less fortunate than you. Um, it's a central focus in Judaism and one that I'm very passionate about. It also um, comes up a lot in Megillat Rut that's read on Shavuot and it focuses on leaving grains of unharvested wheat um, in the corners of everyone's field for those less fortunate and also not picking up any grains that are dropped during harvesting which are also left for those less fortunate. Um, so the concept of staka and the remembrance of my bat mitzvah on Shavuot are two huge factors that um, make me excited every year for Shavuot, but also um, obviously the del delicious cheesecake doesn't hurt either. So just wanted to wish everyone a Chag Sameach. Hi everyone. I think that this is definitely the most uh, different Shavuot I've ever experienced and I hope everyone and their families are well in these trying times. When thinking about life right now and Shavuot, I noticed some strong similarities that I'd like to discuss briefly. In the Chag of Shavuot, we celebrate the Jewish people receiving the Torah at Sinai, over seven weeks after beginning the journey of leaving slavery from Egypt. At the moment, I think that as a society, we're on our own journey, hoping to move forward from our own troubling times. I hope that just as the Jewish people receive the wisdom and benefit from life with Torah, we as a society can all grow from this situation and reap the rewards of a world with more knowledge, understanding and empathy. There's a really lovely midrash that I learned last year that teaches that all the souls of every Jew in existence, past, present and future, witnessed and were there at Sinai. So whilst these times may feel isolating, we can take comfort in knowing that the Jewish people are, have always been, and always will be, a connected people. I hope that everyone enjoys their Shavuot, a holiday filled with learning, family, and some delicious dairy food. Chag Sameach. I just want to share a brief thought with you about Shavuot. It's such a meaningful holiday, at least it should be. It's perhaps one of the lesser known or lesser celebrated of the um, great big holidays, Rosh Hashanah and Sukkot and Pesach and Purim, and then you have Shavuot. But Shavuot should be way up there. It uh, marks a seminal event in our history, a, a, an event that really put a stamp on our soul, on our very DNA as a people. The giving of the Torah, it's when we signed on the dotted line and signed the contract, entered into 
a solid relationship with God and with each other, receive the Torah, pledge to commit ourselves to the Jewish way of life and to fulfill the mitzvot and so on. It's a great holiday and, and lots to reflect on on the coming uh, two days of Friday and Shabbat on Shavuot. It's also a holiday on which we reflect on gratitude. In times gone by, uh, the farmers used to ascend to the temple in Jerusalem and bring with them this large basket of their first and choicest fruit. And in that way, they would thank God for their bounty, their produce. So Shavuot is also a time for acknowledging the blessings in our lives. Yes, there are difficulties. Yes, there are hardships and even pain. But there's also a tremendous amount of good and a tremendous amount of blessings. And Shavuot is really a perfect time to pause and to spend time acknowledging that gratitude. So two big highlights, the giving of the Torah, the idea of Bikurim, the festival of harvest. And yet, what is the name of Shavuot? The most popular of names. It does carry a few names, but the most popular of names is Shavuot. What does Shavuot mean? Literally, it means weeks. Why is it called weeks? Because it follows the counting of the seven weeks since Pesach, the Sfirat Omer. We've been counting seven weeks to this festival. And because the seven weeks is now up, the culmination of the seven weeks, this holiday is called Shavuot. Now, that's pretty strange. According to that logic, the end of the week, Shabbat, should be called the week because the week preceded it. In the context of sport, perhaps the grand final or a final of any sport should be called the semifinal because you get through the semifinal in order to get to the final. And yet, no, it's called the grand final. It's called Shabbat. Why is Shavuot called weeks? I think there's a tremendous lesson here. I remember hearing this and I can't remember who I've heard it from, but it's a very powerful lesson that we can really take in every part of our life, our spiritual life, uh, our everyday life. And that is to value the journey, to find meaning in the process. You see, when the Jewish people were freed from Egypt, from Mitzrayim, they knew they were heading towards Mount Sinai to receive the Torah, to enter into this relationship with God. And they used each and every one of those days and each and every one of those weeks to work on themselves, to prepare. And they looked forward with great anticipation each and every day to this great revelation that was Shavuot on Mount Sinai. It's not always about the destination. It's not only about the goal. In fact, the more we invest, the more effort, the more love, the more patience, the more meaning we invest into the journey, into the process that precedes the destination, that precedes the goal, not only does it make the journey meaningful, but it actually makes the goal that much more exciting, the destination that much more meaningful and enjoyable as it was for the Jews when they received the Torah. So there's another thing to reflect on on Shavuot. We live in a time where we're so used to clicking a button and getting what we want and need right away. Within a few moments, we can, you know, our Uber shows up or we receive our food or our entertainment or our shopping. And to the extent that if it takes a little bit longer than we would like or than we would expect, we get frustrated. We get upset. Why isn't it, why isn't it here already? I want it. I need it. Well, Shavuot reminds us to slow down. And in fact, the time in which we live sends us the same message, just to slow down and make the most of each and every day. It's worth it. You know, if you're going to master a new skill or study a new part of Torah, enjoy the process. You can't enjoy the goal unless you find meaning in, in the journey. That, that's a message that really resonates with me, and I trust that it will resonate with you as well. So on this Shavuot, Yes, we need to reflect on our relationship with our Judaism, how the Torah talks to us in 2020. We also have to reflect on our gratitude and all the blessings that we've been granted by God, but also to remember the importance of slowing down. And it's not just about the goal. It's not just about the destination, but it's, it's about finding value, meaning, purpose 
in the journey towards that said des destination, towards that goal. I wish you good luck. Wish us all good luck on that reflection. And I wish you and yours a Chag Sameach, a truly meaningful and enjoyable Chag. Enjoy some good cheesecake. Not a mitzvah, but it's definitely a good custom. And uh, please God, we will continue to remain healthy and safe. And I look forward to being in touch with you soon. Chag Sameach.